What if I told you you could break the cycle of bad teeth within your family? If you have a family who've got bad teeth, bad gums, gum disease, you don't have to think it's hereditary. No matter what age you are, you have the power to break the cycle and change the future for your family tree. If you think that you inherited gum disease, the problem is that you feel you have no power. It's an excuse, kind of an excuse, that you had no power to stop it, but it's also a reason to believe, as is so often out there, that you have no power to reverse it, to control it, to cure it. This is why I think it's really important to go through this, and I have a story of a gentleman who brushed and flossed for 40 years, took off, took care of his teeth, went for cleanings, Everything was fine. He felt like he maintained his oral health beautifully for 40 years. Until just recently, he was diagnosed with periodontal disease, gum disease. And he came to me kind of surprised that he had suddenly had this problem, and he announced that it was a hereditary problem. Now, it's not a hereditary problem. It's a bacterial disease. And if you understand how gum disease happens, then you can understand how you deal with it. The problem today in America is that 50% of 30-year-olds have gum disease, periodontal disease, and they don't even know it. If you don't have a hygienist or a dentist who is looking carefully, specifically, to tell you that you have periodontal disease, it's really difficult to know if you have. Once upon a time, you may have noticed that your gum was bleeding. Oh, and then it seemed to get better. And that swelling seemed to go away. So you assume that your gums got healthier. The problem is that more serious periodontal disease doesn't make your gums bleed. It doesn't have a symptom. It doesn't feel painful. You don't even know what's going on underneath the gums. So what happens in periodontal disease in a nutshell, and I have other videos about this in far more detail, they opens up a space between your gum, basically, and your tooth. And it's called a pocket. And into that space, into that pocket, certain bacteria can live and multiply. And these bacteria need a dark, low oxygen space. And that's what this pocket gives them. If you don't have a pocket, these bacteria just drift around through your mouth, coming and going. You see, you pick them up from other people, but they just go away. They just disappear. They, they, you swallow them, they get with your food, maybe you rinse your mouth and clean them, some of them out. If they're just floating in your saliva, then not a problem. And if you take a salivary test, if you actually do a test, chances are you will find you have one or two or three or four of these species of bacteria in that sample of the saliva out of your mouth. One of the problems, though, is that we share these bacteria that are in our mouths. And this is a fairly new thing to understand. Lots of people don't understand. In our saliva are these bacteria that we transfer to one another. Plaque bacteria are some of them, but these periodontal or gum disease bacteria are different. And these periodontal bacteria are transferred between family members. It's just something that happens. If you're somebody that works in an assisted living center, perhaps with a lot of old people, you may be very prone to picking up these bacteria because as we age, people tend to have more pocketing, therefore more places for these bacteria to multiply. So our risk goes up of having them in our saliva. If we're working in an environment with people who tend to have really bad teeth, if we have families who tend to have really bad teeth, and if we have friends who have or tend to have really bad teeth. Now, of course, there are habits, our drinking, smoking, sleeping, general health habits, our nutrition, our general health, all these things come into play. But when it comes down to periodontal pathogens, really the highest risk factor for picking them up is if you have pocketing. 
So the way that you can prevent these from being in your mouth, from multiplying in your mouth, is to make sure you don't have periodontal pockets. That's really the message I'm trying to get across, is that your family may be highly infected. That your family eating habits or smoking habits or whatever habits they have may have actually promoted gum disease in your family. And this is for you something that you have control over. You can control whether you're going to be at high risk for periodontal disease. It's really important to think of that if you have a family history of diabetes, any of the chronic inflammatory conditions. Perhaps you have a family history of heart problems or arthritis or cognitive dysfunction, maybe whether it's dementia or Alzheimer's. Many of these problems are associated with bad teeth and the bad teeth run in a family or the bad gums run in a family. So the family transmission is one aspect. You can also have family habits, as I mentioned, diet or things that you happen to do that are also passed along. In addition, you can have even the structure of the bones and the skin and everything of your face as we know, that is a genetic thing. And if you're perhaps you have a shorter upper lip so that your mouth tends to not close completely, so that you're breathing through your mouth more than somebody with lips that actually seal, that can be a family trait. Maybe you all have shorter upper lips, which looks beautiful. Don't worry about it. It just dries your mouth because your seal never seals up to allow the liquids in your mouth to heal and travel around your teeth. So there are these familial jaw shapes, lip shapes, all kinds of things like that that make a difference. Now, does this mean that, for instance, the gentleman that came to me, he's doomed? Well, the first thing is we have to get plaque under control. And if you're just relying on six monthly cleanings or four monthly cleanings or even three monthly cleanings to get rid of plaque in your mouth, it's not enough. Using xylitol in the way I have lots of videos and lots of information on the website, how to use xylitol at the end of every meal. And then don't eat or drink. Give your mouth an hour, at least an hour, to be resting with your saliva. That's the first thing that you can do that will, over six months, reduce the amount of plaque you form. So that's the first thing, preventively for the future. But it takes six months of about five to 10 grams of xylitol every day, split up as little bits of xylitol at the end of meals. Now, the second thing you can do and should do immediately is look at your toothbrush. If you're using a soft toothbrush, you'll be at high risk for having pocketing. Soft toothbrushes are generally ineffective. They're not massaging the gum, they're not stimulating blood flow and lymphatic flow well enough to get the circulation moving and to generate the healing that needs to happen in your gums so that that pocket actually almost Velcros itself up. But in order to get that to happen, you want to use a toothbrush that I call a flossing toothbrush. It's a toothbrush with bristles of different lengths. And when you use that to basically massage your gums, and I have a lot of videos about how to actually do that, but you really want to be focused on making sure that with an adequately resilient toothbrush, you are brushing so that you are stimulating regrowth and new gum tissue to seal up those pockets. You cannot rely on a soft toothbrush, an electric toothbrush, they don't do an adequate job. So why would your dentist even recommend a soft toothbrush? Everybody does today, except older dentists who know that you need to do gum massage and you can't do it with a soft toothbrush. But you see, the average dentist is in a quandary because so many people today are whitening their teeth and that makes your teeth porous and soft or they're drinking sodas or sparkling water or just sipping water all day long, so that your teeth are very demineralized, very soft again, very easy to wear away. And they're worried about you wearing your tooth surface away, which is a potential 
if you don't use products and strategies that strengthen your enamel. So besides telling you that you really need to do gum massage, which is really important, the only way you'll ever get your pockets to heal and to protect yourself from picking up periodontal pathogens, you also need to strengthen your teeth. And that would mean you have to reevaluate if it's really worth whitening your teeth. Are you sipping water or, or worse, acidic drinks, sparkling water or sodas all day long? You have to give your mouth adequate time to heal both the tooth surface and make it strong and also bring saliva into your mouth, let it rest there for an hour so it can heal your gums. But if you do those things, you will start to see a huge difference. Usually people notice that when they're brushing the gums on the inside of their teeth, they get quickly get regrowth of this gum tissue back between their teeth. One of the things you can do is actually test for these bacteria in your saliva. There's a company called Oral DNA, and it's a company that actually does testing, and it's called Oral DNA. It's just they measure the numbers of these bacteria in your mouth, in your saliva. It's a simple test. You swish some salty water around your mouth and spit it all into a test tube and put in a little preservative, put a stopper on and send it off. And what you get will be quantities. You'll actually see if you have scary levels of gum disease bacteria in your mouth or not. And it's something I think everybody should be tested for every couple of years. And particularly if you start kissing other people, new, somebody new in your life, especially as you're older, and especially if you have a new job, maybe working with elderly people who have bad teeth or who maybe have a history of bad teeth, you could be at risk if you're a caretaker. Or maybe it's just within your own family and you want to do something different for yourself. And having this test done at 30 or 35 years old is not too young to find out and take preventive steps early. It's much harder as you get older, but it's never a hereditary thing that you just have to accept. There is one factor, and I do want to put this in there, that some people do have a genetic predisposition to developing gum disease. It's, it's something they have found through testing this, the people with a certain genetic factor tend to develop gum disease more easily. Now, I can't, I really can't go into that and whether it's something that could genetically be changed, I don't know. It could be changed by how you eat, how healthy you are. I, there are so many factors that are maybe related or unrelated, and I can't dive into it because I don't know enough about it. But if you're somebody that comes back or your dentist has done a test like that and said, you have a family history of gum disease, I would simply tell you, get onto my system, get onto these strategies, start using gum massage, and you can change everything for yourself. My I, I, other videos to say that I have a family history of really bad gums and teeth, but it didn't have to happen to me or to my children or to my grandchildren. We have a whole new family tree when it comes to oral health. Fortunately, because I learned about these things, but I want to share that with you so you don't just accept ever that you just have to put up with gum disease because you don't.